Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss few power series. We are going to find their radius of convergence, interval of convergence and set S. S is a collection of real numbers for which the given power series is convergent. So this is our first power series. So the standard form of power series is summation C n x raised to n. We can compare the given power series with its standard form and we get C n. What is our Cn? Cn is n raised to n. So let us find first radius of convergence. So radius of convergence having formula r is equal to r means radius of convergence. The formula is 1 by alpha. So alpha can be calculated in two different ways. The first way is limit n tends to infinity supremum of mod Cn raised to 1 by n and it has one more formula to calculate limit n tends to infinity mod cn plus 1 upon cn. So we can use any suitable formula to find the value of alpha. But now the question is how to decide which formula we have to use. So generally when we have power n then we go for first formula otherwise we go for a second formula. When we have power n it has power 1 by n so n and 1 by n will get cancelled to each other and easily we will get the value. So in this example See, in this example, we have power n, so I will go for the first formula. Then, alpha is equal to limit n tends to infinity supremum of mod cn raised to 1 by. So, this is equal to limit n tends to infinity supremum. I am putting the value of cn, n raised to n, raised to 1 by. So, raised to n and raised to n, 1 by n will get cancelled to each other. Limit n tends to infinity supremum of mod n but see when you apply the limit it will go to infinity so that's why it will go to infinity it's monotonic increasing sequence you can easily see and if you apply the limit it will go to infinity so the value of alpha is infinity okay so i'm keeping this formula as it is keeping this formula as it is okay yes and let us use the remaining space so then r radius of convergence is 1 by alpha 1 by alpha but what is value of alpha infinity so 1 upon infinity which is 0 so that's why we can declare radius of convergence is is sorry huh, is 0 after that we will find interval of convergence so let me mention interval of convergence the formula of interval of convergence is very simple which is minus r comma r right but see here r is 0 so we get minus 0 comma 0 so it's an open interval so that's why it does not contain even 0 so that's why the interval of convergence is phi it does not contain 0 also right since it is an open interval so in this way we got the answers of first two questions radius of convergence and interval of convergence so after that we have to find set s s means set of points set of real numbers for which the given power series is convergent right see interval of convergence is phi so there is only one possibility for zero we can get the convergent series so let me mention uh, for x is equal to zero see if i put x is equal to zero the entire term is zero if I put 0 there, we will have 0, 0 plus 0 plus 0, we will have the answer 0. So we get a finite value, so that, that's why we say the series is convergent. So for x is equal to 0, summation n running from 1 to infinity, n raised to n, x raised to n is convergent series. Getting? Interval of convergence is phi and only for x is equal to 0, we are getting the series is convergent. Therefore, set S has only one point singleton 0. So in this way we got radius of convergence, interval of convergence and set S. Okay. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will go for second example. So now we have a second power series. Summation x raised to n upon n factorial. So again I will compare the given power series with this standard power series C n x raised to n. So will you tell me what will be the value of C n? Can you guess the value of C n? Cn is nothing but multiple of x raised to n. 
here the multiple of x raised to n is 1 upon n factorial. So now the question is which formula we have to use to find a value of alpha. Here also we are going to find radius of convergence, interval of convergence and set s. Okay. So let us go one by one. We will find first radius of convergence which is 1 by alpha and we have to find first alpha. See, uh, I have to already told you the technique. If you have power n, then go for the first formula. Otherwise, go for the second formula. So obviously, there is no any power. So I will go for the second formula. In second formula, we want cn plus 1 also. So let us find cn plus 1. It can be easily obtained by replacing n by n plus 1. So this is cn plus 1. Then alpha limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus 1 upon c n let us put the values okay what is our c n plus 1 1 upon n plus 1 factorial right and c n yes 1 upon n factorial okay so yes we have this space let us use this is equal to limit n tends to infinity there is no need of mod since these are positive real numbers, right? Uh, n factorial is in denominator of denominator. We can shift to the numerator and we will have n factorial upon n plus 1 factorial. This is equal to limit n tends to infinity n factorial. See, n plus 1 factorial can be written as n plus 1 into n factorial. See, in factorial symbol, we go back, right? now. 4 factorial means 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Similarly, n plus 1 factorial means n plus 1 into n and we go back in this way. That is nothing but this one. So n factorial, n factorial will get cancelled and limit n tends to infinity 1 upon n plus 1. If you apply the limit, here we will have infinity in denominator. So that's why its value is 0. So we got the value of alpha is 0, right? Alpha is 0, so let us find radius of convergence, then r is equal to 1 by alpha, alpha is 0, so 1 upon 0 is infinity. So here we get the radius of convergence is infinity, right? So let us find interval of convergence. So interval of convergence, the formula of interval of convergence is minus r comma r. So minus r comma r, that means let us put infinity, minus infinity comma infinity. So that means we have an interval minus infinity to plus inter infinity. That means it covers the entire real line R. Getting now? So R is covered. That means the given power series is convergent for each and every real number. So we got interval of convergence. So let us go for set S. S means set of points where the series is convergent. But here we have already got for all entire real line, for all real numbers, the series is convergent. So obviously S is equal to R. Okay. So in this way, we solved the second sub question. So uh, make a screenshot of it. Then we will go for the third power series. So the third power series is very simple. Summation X raised to N. Okay. So let us compare with the standard form of power series, which is CN X raised to N. So CN means multiple of X raised to N. So what is multiple of X raised to N? Nothing is there. So that's why our CN is 1. So now the question is which formula we have to use, right? So here we can you we can go for the first formula if we have the power n or we can go otherwise we go for the second formula. But see if I use the first formula, we have a simply 1 there. So 1 raised to 1 by n is 1 itself, right? So we can easily solve using first formula. If you use the second formula, then also very easily you will get the answer. But here I am following the first formula. Then alpha. I'm using the first formula of alpha supremum of mod cn raised to 1 by n. So limit n tends to infinity supremum of what is cn? 1. 1 raised to 1 by n. Getting it's 1 itself. Limit n tends to infinity supremum of 1. But see 1 is a constant. If you take supremum, if you apply inf uh, limit, then also you will get the finally value 1. So the value of alpha is 1, okay? Let us go further. So with the help of that alpha, I will find the radius of convergence, right? Mm, then, what is formula of R? It's 1 by alpha. The value of alpha is 1. So it's 1 by 1, which is 1. So therefore, we can declare 
the radius of convergence is 1. Let us go for the second sub question that is interval of convergence. Getting? We want to find radius of convergence, interval of convergence and set S. Interval of convergence having very simple formula minus R comma R. So, which is equal to minus 1 comma 1. So, this is interval of convergence, right? So, after that we have to find set S. So, S is a set of points, set of real numbers for which the radi uh, that series is convergent. So, interval of convergence having the same meaning. It's an interval. Okay, it's the interval. If you take any point inside the interval, the series is convergent. And if you take any point outside it, the, it is divergent, right? So, we have, we are doubtful about those boundary points only. We will simply check whether it is uh, convergent at 1 and minus 1. Okay, so let us check. For x is equal to 1, let us see what will happen. x is equal to 1 if I put here summation n running from 0 to infinity x raised to n is simply summation n running from 0 to infinity 1 raised to n that means 1 itself. That means what we get 1 summation we are writing 1 that means 1 plus 1 plus 1 how many times infinitely many times getting what we get infinitely many times since 1 raised to n is 1 itself infinitely many times. So if you add them you will have the infinity so that's why the series is divergent. See, there is no more space to write, make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. Okay, so we get a divergent series for x is equal to 1. Let me mention, therefore, the series is divergent for x is equal to 1. So, we have a second boundary point minus 1. Let us check for x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so summation n running from 0 to infinity x raised to n that means summation n running from 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to n. So minus 1 raised to n that means minus 1 plus 1 okay. So if you expand it you will have like this minus 1 plus 1 since alternate even and odd powers minus 1 raised to 1 1 minus 1 raised to 2 plus 1 minus 1 raised to 3 minus 1 plus 1 getting. So it's 0 it's 0 but see it, it will never end. So that's why we are doubtful either its value is plus 1 or 0. Getting? Uh, so that's why we say uh, it is divergent series. Since we are not getting a finite value. So let me mention therefore it is divergent. See we already have the interval of convergence for all points of that interval the series is definitely convergent. Right? We are simply discussing the boundary points and we got for the first boundary point x is equal to 1 the series is divergent and for the second boundary point minus 1 the series is again divergent. So therefore our s is nothing but the interval of convergence for those points only the series is convergent. Okay, So make a screenshot of it then we will stop. Thank you. See you.